This video is a brief introduction to the idea of SQL databases for our users and how to set up our studio to run SQL queries using an SQLite database. Most of the material for this class focuses on storing data in CSV or other delimited files. In addition to these flat files, one of the most common ways to store data and work with it is using databases. And we're going to talk about databases and how to work with them uh, because they are a good place to store data. In particular, they allow real-time collaboration on adding and updating data by multiple people. Uh, working in lots of different locations. As a result, lots of existing data is stored in them, and so it's important to know how to access that data uh, to work with it in R. And in addition to that, databases are designed to work with and manipulate data out of memory. So they can do out of memory computation. And so what that means is if you're working with a data set that's very large, too large to work with directly in R, by working with it in a database, we can actually still accomplish the same kinds of data manipulations and calculations that we need to be able to do. We're going to be talking about a particular class of database called an SQL database or a relational database. And in these SQL databases, data is stored in tables. That's the equivalent of the data frames that we've been working with in R. And then queries are written that store questions about the data. So those are equivalent to the dplyr pipelines that we've worked with. And these queries are written in something called Structured Query Language, or SQL for short. And it's worth knowing that some folks pronounce SQL SQL. So if you hear someone talking about SQL in a database context, that's what they mean. There are lots of different SQL databases out there. You may have heard of databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, MS Access, and others. We're going to use one called SQLite. And we're going to use it because it's simple. Each database is just a single file that you can move and store in all of the usual ways that you can with any other file. And as a result, it works basically anywhere with almost no setup. It's also a really good, strong database. It's great for relatively small projects, up to several million rows, that don't require simultaneous data entry by multiple people. If you need something more powerful, I recommend PostgreSQL. That's what my group works with, but a lot of other database management systems will be very effective depending on the question. We're going to use our studio to interact with SQLite databases because we're already up and running with our studio. Uh, and we're going to start by connecting our studio to an SQL database and running SQL queries in them. And then we'll use that to learn how to write SQL. And then later, we'll learn how to work with databases directly inside of our R scripts. We need to do a couple of setup steps so that our studio is ready to interact with our SQLite database. Let's start by installing the two packages that it needs. So we'll go down to the console and do install.packages. We'll install two packages, so I'm going to make a vector here, C. And then uh, we need the DBI package and the RSQL, that's all capitals, and then we're going to switch to lowercase ITE, the RSQLite package. 
And if we run this, we'll now get these packages that R uses to talk to databases. RStudio is going to use it to let us do SQL work directly in a database. The work that we'll do using databases straight from our, our R scripts will rely on these packages as well. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and download our database file. Uh, and we'll do that using download.file. And the file is located at the following URL, https colon slash slash n down loader dot figshare dot com slash files slash one 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 eight eight five five zero. And then we'll put a comma and the name of the file that we want to store this to, portal.sqlite. And if we run this, uh, we will download uh, this file. We can see over here, uh, we've got now portal.sqlite, and it's about a megabyte in size. And that file holds the three tables that we've been working with so far uh, from portal, the surveys table, the species table, and the plots table all together in one database. Finally, to let us do uh, SQL here, we need to go to the new file button. And now instead of selecting our script, we're going to go down and click on SQL script. And this is going to generate a file with a special comment at the top and a very basic query to get us started. And this special comment is our studio's way of connecting to the database. And so we need to update this special comment to tell it the name of the database. We're going to go in here just before the last parenthesis, so inside this db connect function and type comma and then db name is equal to quotes portal.sqlite. And so this is just telling it that this is the database that we're working with down here. And so now if we save this file as portal analysis, That file should save, and what we should see is the output of this simple select statement, uh, which is just the number one down here. And if that's working, you're all connected and ready to learn SQL, which we'll do starting in the next video. Uh, probably got a typo in here. Seems right. And downloader. Big share. Did I type org? The hazards of mostly working in a nonprofit educational space is that sometimes your brain replaces dot org dot com with dot org. Oh well. Okay. Let's try this all again. That is a database that stores the same portal data set files that we've been working with a lot this semester. Oh my god, no, no, no. This is going to be one of those days where I spend like five hours to produce a single hour's worth of material at best because I am messing up. And now if we save this as, say, portalanalysis.sqlite, hmm. 